There is one unspoken rule in keyboard YouTube and it's this. If another keyboard YouTuber challenges you, you take the challenge. So Amira rolled into my DMs and was like, let's do a challenge video. We were both gonna buy the same cheap keyboard kit off of Amazon and see how far we could take it. And who could take it? the furthest. I ordered it on Amazon, got it in the mail. We decided to hop on a call and chat about it. What's up? Hey, uh, did you get your keyboard? I did. It came in the most jank box I've ever seen in my life. Surprised that it didn't <laughs> fall out. So what are we doing? Amiro messaged me and was like, hey, I want to do a keyboard build challenge. We scoured Amazon and found a really cheap gaming keyboard kit that claimed to be a lot of things and ended up being none of them, but it's fine. And we ended up picking the Kisoto the Gaming Mechanical And uh, it's made of all plastic and it's definitely not hot swap. <laughs> they lied. <laughs> not only was this thing not hot swap board, I didn't realize that it was three pin. Just looking at this board to me looks like a blank canvas. I feel like it'd be way cooler if we took the customization to the next level and really pimped out this case. Yeah, sounds good. I'm up for the challenge. It's time to make this keyboard look much better than it does and sound way better. I thought you were gonna say much better than Coley's <laughs> Oh, yes, let me do that, let me do it. It's time to make this keyboard sound much better than Coley's board. Okay, rude. <laughs> it's, it's on. All right, all right. You're going down. <laughs> no, you're going down. So there I was, a full blank canvas, not knowing what I was going to do. But then I looked under my desk and realized that I have an entire collection of Posca pens that I don't use. If you don't know about Posca pens, they're paint pens that have a matte finish and a super bright pigment. So they were, of course, perfect for the challenge. I took the board apart, took the top case, and did a white coat of paint just as a base coat so that the Posca pen had a good base to adhere to. And as much as I wanted to just wing it and paint whatever I wanted on the case, I kind of realized that I should really do a pencil sketch on the case and have a plan. I didn't really anticipate how long doing the penciling was gonna take, so I also did some incremental painting just to see, like, was everything gonna look good? My board kind of looked like this halfway through the process. Sometimes I was applying the paint directly with the Posca pen, but other times I was dispensing some of the Posca pen paint onto some palette paper and using either a paintbrush or a toothpick to get finer details. Because admittedly, I had a very big scope here and decided to do some very, very small details all over this board and probably why it took a long time. Real quick, if you're appreciating all the work and dedication that I put into this $40 Amazon board, please consider dropping a like on the video. I would really, really appreciate that. Oh, and subscribe and ring the bell. Why not? So there I was, painting and painting and painting. Once all the main colors were down, I was able to go in with this thin little Posca pen. I have a black one and a white one and go in and really add some intense details. And after very long time, many, many hours of painting the top case. It was finally done, but I also had to build the rest of the board. I had some standard clip-in stabilizers. I did the band-aid mod, I lubed them up, I put it all together. Then I decided to fill the bottom of the case with Noiko car sound dampener, and I did two layers of tape mod on the back of the PCB. Confessions of a keyboard YouTuber. I've never soldered before. <laughs> Oh, it's so embarrassing. I know, you guys, I joined the hobby when Hot Swap was like just becoming a standard in most budget-friendly boards. So I just never, I just never needed to learn how to solder. I don't have a soldering kit, but my dad does. This is what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure that it's straight out of the 1970s. I got the rhythm down. No, I'm not gonna show you the back of the PCB because you don't need to see that. It's kind of like that Homer Simpson meme. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> also, I had to put some Gateron reds in the top right corner because they're the only other three pin switch I had and I ran out of mints. Also, if you want to link to the Amazon of this keyboard, it's not in the description because I don't think that you should buy this board. Uh, this is my mini review. Uh, it sucks and it was falsely advertised. Don't go looking for this board and don't buy it. <laughs> I put the keycaps on and it was finally time to put the case on the board. Oh my god, what a satisfying moment. I mean, just look at this. I was so 
so happy when I finally arrived at this point. Look how good this board looks. I can't even tell you how proud I am. This board took me two months from start to finish. <laughs> That's crazy to say. I they usually take one night. But like I just look at this thing. It's amazing. Before we jump into talking about the art, I'm gonna talk about the keycaps. I ended up going with GMK Hennessy because it's a simple black on white set and it's not gonna take away from the design of the case, which is kind of where I want the focal point to be. Like when you're at an art museum, you'll notice that all the walls are white so the art is the focal point. So when it came to figuring out what the art style of the board was gonna be, I was feeling really inspired by Patrick E. Dell's work. His stuff is very fun, kind of like adventure timey, really cute little characters just running around doing a bunch of random stuff. So that's what I wanted to do on my board. I'll point out some of my favorite things. I absolutely love the arrow keys section. I love the little water droplets. I have my character spread throughout the board, hiding in a few different places. This little space area ended up looking awesome. I also really love the skull as well as the little lamp and how the color is different under the light than outside of the light. I love this dude knocking some poison onto the blue guy or whatever juice love potion, who knows. This little angry guy on the jelly. I also got my little character playing Pokemon. Can you tell it's Pokemon? I also love this little angry guy controlling an evil computer as well as the one character that got knocked out by this egg that then cracked and these little angry flames my dog cooper i drew him on there some homages to love if you know you know i hope you guys really enjoyed getting to kind of see like my art style the kind of stuff i gravitate toward so hey curly um what's up it's been three months since our last call how, how did you do oh gosh this board took a long time to make <laughs> super happy with how it turned out a countdown and we'll show our boards yes three two one Whoa! Oh my god! Dude, you did full steampunk. That's sick. Yeah, I was going for full steampunk. That looks so sick! <laughs> Thank you. Two, one. Nice. That space bar is great. So you did a tactile build. Mine's linear. Mine's just KTT yeah. mints that are lubed. Oh, that, that'll probably sound amazing. Here, let me listen to it. That's not mid. That's fine. That's that's very good. Yeah. That I, is. Oh my I, god. He, like I feel like we both made pieces of art. Can you tell my audience where we can find you? You can find me at Amiro YouTube channel. I think it'll be. You'll probably link it to the bottom of the description. Yeah. And links in links in the there. description. Go check out Amiro. Go now. Now that's your mission <laughs> for today. Amiro, fantastic job. Thank you for collaborating with me on this project. Best sound off into the comments who you think won the battle. And please, please, please go subscribe to Amiro. He makes amazing keyboard content and he goes above and beyond. If you watch his videos, you're gonna learn something and you're gonna laugh. He's just fantastic at what he does. Criminally underrated. I'm so happy with how this turned out. I'm gonna display this on a shelf probably for like the rest of my life. Before I wrap up the video, I have a little update on the Coley switches that I thought I would show off. We're getting Coley switches manufactured that you're gonna be able to grab if you are so inclined. Some of the packaging that I designed as well as a picture of the prototypes. I am so excited for this project. Join the Discord if you wanna stay updated and check out the Coley Project Team channel. The other thing I wanna say is if you would like to directly support me, I opened up channel memberships. They have all sorts of perks and stuff like that, so go check it out if you're interested in supporting me. Also, we got our first channel member. Their name's Moss. Here they are. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. It was in the making for a while and I'm super proud of how the board turned out. As always, don't be a stranger. Bye, guys.